As you may already know, 3D Coat has two primary platforms for texture painting in the application. One is your standard texture map UV based painting, where you are painting directly onto the image map, both in a 3D viewport as well as a 2D texture editor. And so as you're painting, you are simultaneously able to paint on your color diffuse map, your specularity map, and your depth map, which in the case of micro vertex painting, you are working with a displacement map, same thing with PTEX. And with per pixel painting, you're actually painting with depth on a normal map. So the next platform is vertex painting, and you may have already seen some videos covering that a bit, but what I wanna point out in this video is what the advantages are of using vertex painting as opposed to image map painting. So let's go ahead and dive straight into this. What I have here is a 6 million poly model here in the voxel workspace and I'm going to paint directly onto the vertices. There's no image map, no UVs to be concerned with. So one of the major benefits is it allows me the flexibility to paint now or later and even both. What I mean by that is I could do a lot of the texture work early on even while I'm sculpting and sometimes it may help to actually flesh out the look of a character or an object as you're working in this sculpting environment. And vertex painting allows you to stay essentially in this environment, yet come over and paint with the very same tools you have been accustomed to or may have been accustomed to in the past with texture map painting. The main exception is that the 2D texture editor, which is a very, very powerful and versatile companion uh, to image map painting is one thing that is just not supported okay there is no uv map so you can't really use this at this stage but again this particular platform gives you the flexibility okay, to paint now or later so later on if you want to use the texture editor you could do that another thing i want to point out is that if you're ready to do some texture painting for a little while before returning to the sculpting room, you could opt to actually bring the Voxtree layer panel into the paint workspace, as well as the shader panel. Okay, you can access those from the Windows menu under pop-ups. And right here, Voxtree and shaders menu. So you can dock those wherever you feel it's most appropriate. So that way you can access it without having to jump back and forth between the voxel workspace and the paint workspace. Again, your layer panel works almost identically in this particular platform or this particular mode as it does with image maps. Again, there is another exception and that is the depth channel is not available, but it's really not needed, at least not at this stage, because again, in the voxel room, you have the most advanced level of sculpting tools in the application at your disposal. So the depth channel really just gives you the ability, uh, once you're in the texture map painting stage, if you want to do some high frequency detail work using image maps such as a normal map or displacement map, you can use this here. But again, it's not a replacement for any of the sculpting tools. It just gives you some options at that stage in the pipeline. So again, you really don't need this when you're vertex painting. Okay. So what are some of the distinguishing features then? We know that vertex painting gives us a lot of the same capabilities as image map painting, but what sets it apart? Well, why would I want to actually paint on vertices instead of an image map? Well, one of the major benefits in 3D coats, at least as of this recording, is better performance. Let me go ahead and demonstrate that a little bit here now. You have smoother interactivity when dragging the sliders for your opacity channel or in the blending panel here. So let's go ahead and look at that. I'm going to choose a different shader here, or a different color, I should say. And what I want to do is hide the objects I don't want painted at this point in time. I can always uh, come back and unhide those and paint those later. But if I try to paint now, you'll see 3D Coat will paint across whatever it sees. So let's go ahead and hide those objects. And let's see if ghosting will work. I know in the voxel room, ghosting will give you the option to actually prevent any editing on that particular object. 
So let's see if that also applies to vertex painting, and it certainly appears to. So as you might imagine, this could be extremely handy in the right circumstance, blocking that object from being edited while at the same time providing a certain measure of transparency. Really cool. So, yeah, let's go ahead and hide these other elements though. And you can paint with color and specularity as well. So let me turn on specularity. And I want to point out up front, small word of warning, regardless if you're vertex painting or painting on image maps in 3D code, you always want to leave layer zero alone. Hopefully Andrew will lock this layer, but for now, just know you want to leave this alone because this keeps like your basic information, your basic shader information. Okay, so just work with other layers. So yeah, you can stack layers on top of one another. Can go back with that same type of color. Skipping forward just a little bit. And I can even paint in cavity. that off, create a new layer, choose five, and I can see a preview here and I can even scale that. Let's try 10. And again, your interactivity with sliders is much, much faster this way. And so now, uh, with the paintbrush selected here, I can just go ahead and start painting. this. I choose multiply. Choose a different more solid uh, brush alpha. And I can use really large brushes without much if any of a performance hit. And I can even use this to create something of a dirt or a cavity map to better see how the model is going to turn out while I'm sculpting on a high poly model. Let me hide these other layers. Okay, or I could even change that blending mode, this one. Change it to maybe a color dodge. Crank the opacity way down. And on this layer, we call it cavity one. Make the color a little bit darker. And then I can choose something like a freeform lasso or maybe a rectangular selection. But first I'm going to check or uncheck ignore back faces. So let's use this. I can select the entire object here.
and basically apply you know a dark color into the crevices and cavities of the model. And again, I can open this up, kind of get a preview, drag that up a bit. Okay, and uh, yeah, we'll do the same thing again. We can see it's it's a little bit splotchy, but we can always go in and smooth it. And uh, what I'm going to do is crank the border width up quite a bit. I'm going to undo to undo that last iteration there. And that uh, border width gives me a little bit more anti-aliasing. So it should be a little bit softer. Okay, that's good. I'm going to turn off or check ignore back faces so that I'm working just here in the front of what I can see. And uh, I'll use a regular brush, pull the shift key, and I can smooth just as I would in the voxel room. And I can smooth areas out. I'm going to hide that initial layer there. Oops. And I want to point out that I can actually create a mask layer. Call that mask. And let me drag that up over top. Actually, underneath the cavity mask. Okay. So, what this will allow me to do is I can use this layer to mask not just uh, one layer, but any number of layers. And I would do that by going to the layer that I want to affect, then go to the blending panel at the very bottom, link it, link the layer to the mask, okay, and by default what it's going to do is it's going to completely mask it out and you can paint in the color or paint in the areas that you do not want masked out and you can always invert that here, invert the linkage. So, let's go back now And on this mask layer, I'm going to reduce it down to about four or five. And now when I paint in this area, I need to make sure to get out of cavity mode. And so now as I paint, you can see I'm painting out the area that I don't want. On that layer, I could just use the erase uh, tool or erase brushes like I would in Photoshop, but again, this mask it allows you to do it non-destructively, so you can always go in and softly brush out certain areas. And you can even use the shift key to smooth parts of your mask as well to make it blend really nice. Okay. You can use the blending panel here to actually adjust the brightness, contrast, let me turn brightness down a bit, the specularity modulation, crank it way up, Speculated brightness, make it considerably more glossy, bring that way down, it's a little bit more diffuse. So yeah, you've got a lot of power here and you also have the ability to use adjustments like you would in Photoshop. Go to the textures menu under adjust and you have a lot of options here for gamma correction, brightness contrast. Uh, hue, saturation, and lightness. 
don't think preview at this point in time works. So I can hit OK and it will adjust it, but I can't see the preview. So that's one current limitation. If you plan to actually bake all this color and specularity information down to a lower polygon version, then at that stage you could go in and make these adjustments. The point I want to make here is that probably about 95 to 98 percent of the capabilities you have for texture painting on maps in 3D Coat you have for vertex painting. So let me go ahead and change the blending mode here. And I'll pause right here and pick it up in the next video. So stay tuned.